Donald Trump has spent a decade trying to keep the American people divided and afraid of each other. She's everything that I always wanted in a president. Nobody loves our Latino community and our Puerto Rican community more than I do. Trump's been calling this country trash. So it, it, enough is enough. Let us fight for this beautiful country we love. Kamala, you're fired. Get out. Get out of here. You're fired. You're fired. Hello and welcome to this special broadcast of the U.S. presidential elections. I'm Parikshit Lutra. Donald Trump and Kamala Harris made their final pitch ahead of the November 5 presidential poll, setting the stage for what promises to be one of the most divisive elections in U.S. history. From Trump attacking top Democrats as the enemy from within to Harris's petty tyrant jab at her rival. Neither of the leaders held back their punches this election season. Today we try and analyze how... Who enters the White House this coming January could have a significant impact on U.S. foreign policy. While Trump is expected to be guided by his America First principle, an actor as a disruptor in chief, a Kamala Harris presidency could signify continuity in several areas. However, neither are expected to soften their stance on tariffs. I'm now joined by uh, Tim Romer, former U.S. ambassador to India and an authority on India-U.S. ties. Ambassador Romer, Always a pleasure having you here on CNBC TV 18 and wishing you a very happy Diwali, first of all. Happy Diwali. I'll be going to the State Department on Friday to celebrate with many Americans this great holiday. Absolutely. That's great to hear, Ambassador Roma. And, you know, I must tell you, we saw Diwali at the White House. You're going to celebrate Diwali at the State Department. We saw Ambassador Garcetti really shaking a leg at the Diwali party at the embassy. Looks like Indo-US ties are closer than ever before. Well, they are close. I don't know if you can see the picture up here uh, behind me. It's a picture of my four kids in India when we lived there when I was US ambassador celebrating Holi. So there are many, many things to celebrate in terms of the United States-India um, relationship. Uh, I think the election is going to have a profound effect <clears throat> on the U.S. foreign policy. Uh, Mr. Trump, uh, Vice President Harris bring very, very different perspectives to uh, the policies, whether they be the Middle East, the Ukraine war, uh, China tariffs, uh, and even U.S.-India policy. So there are stark differences here, uh, and uh, we're going to see what is, is going to happen on Election Day. There's a lot of excitement here in the United States. I just came from uh, three and a half days up in uh, Ground Zero, uh, up in Pennsylvania, campaigning in Pittsburgh and in the suburbs. So I feel the adrenaline and the excitement, and uh, we'll see what happens next Tuesday. Right. Now, speaking about the Middle East, how do you think the result of this election will impact uh, U.S. approach to the war in the Middle East? Will the next U.S. president pull back or make the support to Israel more conditional? Well, I just spoke on this topic uh, at the World Summit for uh, NDTV and uh, talked about the Middle East and the policy going forward. As you know, and you're, you're an astute follower of uh, foreign policy, the United States is trying to create a new regional partnership and new geopolitical architecture in the Middle East based upon strength of Israel, normalization of ties with the Saudi Arabia, the Abraham Accords bringing in more moderate uh, countries uh, for security, and including countries like India that have so much at stake in uh, the Middle East. 
from energy to remittances and the diaspora being up there with 9 million Indians to peace and prosperity to a economic corridor that India would like to build in there someday. The United States is trying to create this brand new architecture of regional security up there with many actors, including India. And the United States and India share some common principles about trying to get to that new architecture. One, we both have very good relationships with Israel. Two, we both want some kind of a two-state solution for the Palestinians and a ceasefire and release of hostages. Uh, and three, we both have huge economic interests in that area. Uh, Trump and Harris have different views on that. I think Mr. Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, is going to play out the election in the United States, see who he has to deal with before he comes to any kind of ceasefires, whether that's in Lebanon or whether that's in the, in the Gaza Strip. And uh, I think he's going to try to solidify the military gains politically and strategically before he sits down with a new uh, president and, and sees what cards are on the table. Right. Uh, I would like to ask you about uh, China as well. Clearly, there was a major tariff war that was triggered by Donald Trump with China. Uh, the tariff regime hasn't changed. In fact, Biden has stepped up tariffs on several components and product lines when it comes to China. Do you expect the tariff war with China to intensify regardless of who's in the White House? I do think that the, the, the policy differences with respect to China are more similar between a Trump and Harris presidency. There are some nuanced differences, and I can talk about those. But I think both, uh, you know, the Trump and the Harris presidencies see that uh, the relationship with China is key. Uh, neither one wants war. Neither one wants hostility. We both need a floor. We both, both administrations would need to see a floor you know, in stabilizing the relationship there. Uh, but we recognize as well as that India recognizes that there are certain economic issues and tariff issues and technology issues that are not going to change. I know India has been very aggressive and very, uh, you know, a visionary here in trying to cut back on their reliance with China on technology and ships and manufacturing. The United States is doing the same thing. We are building, you know, hundreds of new manufacturing facilities. So we manufacture our chips and create jobs and are not dependent on South Korea or Taiwan for those national security uh, chips that go in refrigerators and fighter jets and aircraft carriers and drones. Uh, so that part of the national security strategy, I think, is going to be pretty consistent. I think uh, Trump is talking about doubling tariffs on China. Probably Harris would continue what we have today. And there will continue to be differences in terms of, um, you know, the United States is going to reach out and partner, as we have in the Quad, uh, with India, with Japan, with Australia, with Indonesia, with the Philippines, with the ASEAN countries. How do we work together on peace and health care? and stability and climate change to better the world with these other countries rather than simply see it through the lens of are you for or against China? That's not particularly the way we want to go forward. Right. On the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, we've heard from uh, U.S. congressmen, especially uh, people working very closely with the Republicans, that somehow they have been questioning how much the U.S. government is spending in supporting Ukraine. So do you get a sense that Donald Trump, if elected, may take a different stance on the Russia-Ukraine war? I think this is where you're going to see one of the most um, stark and visible differences in foreign policy between the Harris uh, administration or a Trump administration. I think you'd see Harris continue the Biden policies. How do we strengthen NATO and partnerships in the area? How do we work with Ukraine to protect their freedom and their sovereignty uh, and, and uh, you know, their future? Uh, I think uh, Mr. Trump sees this more through the lens of uh, how much is this costing us purely in terms of taxpayer money, not in terms of 
the issues of freedom and prosperity and, and you know, how far will Putin take this if he can conquer or uh, incur into the sovereignty of Ukraine? Can he take this further? Uh, I know Poland, I know other countries are very concerned about Russia's aggressiveness in this part of the air uh, uh, of, of the world, of the region. So this is an area, I think, where you could be um, saying a Trump presidency really push hard for some kind of a negotiation uh, very, very quickly into his presidency. I think the Harris presidency would try to continue uh, to bolster uh, Zelensky and the Ukrainian people for more leverage, uh, for more ability once they do get to a ceasefire and peace uh, to retain and regain more of the land uh, in an equitable uh, fashion uh, that has been exchanged right. over the course of this brutal war. Okay, when we speak about Taiwan, uh, there has been a worry over the last two years that Taiwan could become the next flashpoint and China is watching what's happening in Ukraine very, very closely. Uh, is that going to be a priority area to make sure that U.S. interests in Taiwan, in the Taiwan Strait, are not harmed by China? Well, this is certainly something that we agree with with uh, most of the world. Uh, we do have uh, some sense of strategic ambiguity uh, with respect to our policy with Taiwan. China doesn't know exactly, you know, what the United States uh, would do or how we would react. Would we send troops? Uh, would we uh, send weaponry? Uh, what would we do uh, in terms of a reaction to a China attack? We all know, and we've discussed this uh you know, around the world, that if China did, you know, do something to uh, affect the uh, sovereignty of, of uh, the people of Taiwan, there would be massive economic implications for the entire world. We're talking about 10 times what has happened in Ukraine. Energy prices, trade prices, uh, tariffs, Everything would be effective by this, with about 65% of trade going through the Malacca Straits these days. So this would be devastating for India. This would be absolutely horrific for the world economy, for energy prices. We do not want this to happen. We're also doing some things proactively in the United States to bolster Taiwan's defense, trying to work with them ahead of time and proactively what kinds of weapon systems do they need? What kinds of battle reinforcements right. do they need? Right. What would China be likely to do so that we prevent China from attacking Taiwan in the first place and do this proactively and in a preventive fashion and not simply talk about the consequences uh, of what uh, horrific things would happen if some kind of attack took place on Taiwan. Let's try to prevent that going forward. Right. Uh, so clearly that will be a priority for the United States. Thank you very much, Ambassador Roma, for joining us. Uh, always a pleasure having you here on CNBC TV 18. And uh, we hope to have you again soon on the election verdict, if things are clear, come the 5th of November. Thank you once again for being with us. We're slipping into a short break here on CNBC TV 18. But who will Indian Americans pick, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump? We will try to decode that on the other side with Milan Veshnav. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.